Hello, Sellaholics, and welcome to Sellaholics Anonymous. In this video, I'm going to share with you guys another quick tip, and this time it's going to be on setting preferences. If this is your first time here and you have never viewed any of my content, I do hope that you will check out some of my other videos and hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you are notified whenever I release new content. If you are a subscriber, thank you for the support and welcome back. Alrighty, I got this idea from um, a question that was posted in my Facebook group and so I'm going to share with you guys my suggestions for setting your preferences and you know what's the benefit of them, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and just open up a new window here. And let's see, there we go. And let's turn these grids off. I don't even know why those are on. So to access your preference, you can click on the little, it looks like a little gear down at the bottom, okay? So you'll have the three arrows and above that is your preference. It is also located, it is under edit, or you can hit control K to get to your preferences. Um, but I normally just go to the little gear down here in the corner, right here. Today we're going to talk about your, well first I should have said, I'm gonna go over a few other ones, but first we're gonna talk about the tools. So I'm gonna click on that. Right now you see that all of mine say choose select except for my knife because I was doing a tutorial and I'm gonna show you when you want to have it continually use a specific tool. But for the most part, the best thing to have it set to is choose select. What this will do is as you use a tool over here, it will automatically go back to the selection arrow. Then you're able to you know, right click on it to send it to the back. You're able to click on it to fill it with color and things like that. If you have it set to continue drawing, it's going to stay on that particular tool until you either bring your mouse over to the selection tool and click on it or hit V on your keyboard. So if you want to keep it that way and you're comfortable with constantly coming over here or hitting V, you can leave it on continue to draw but I'm gonna show you what this will do. What I'm gonna do is I will leave, um, continue drawing shapes, well the shapes, I'm gonna leave it on continue drawing shapes so that I can show you what it would do um, all at like one time. So we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. And Select Studio is being a little slow, so we'll just wait for that to Kind of go back to the regular page. All right, so if I come over here to draw a box, you see my um, my cursor is still the little crosshairs. That means it's gonna just continue, like if I try and click on something to do something, it's gonna just continue to draw boxes. A lot of times, if you don't realize it, you'll end up drawing these little small shapes and things like that, so I'm gonna delete that. What you would do is either, like I said, come over here and click on the arrow. Now you have the pointer and you can click on it to fill it with color. Change the line color, send it to the back, be able to select it to modify it and things like that. Don't know what's going on with the color. There we go. Um, the other thing that you would be able to do would be, I'm gonna just gonna choose a different one. So even with the circle, doesn't matter what it is, it will continue to draw the shapes. If you use the keyboard shortcut of V on your keyboard, you see it flashed to the arrow and because I'm right over it, I have the, the pointer there. So you can hit V on your keyboard. When you have it on a choose select, I'm gonna use my knife tool. I can just go ahead and make a cut. And once it's done making that cut, it goes back to the arrow. If I was on continue using knife, it will leave the knife there and it will just continue to make cuts. That is the same thing that it would do, like, you know, how it did with the shapes. If you want to leave it on continue drawing, just remember you have to come up to your arrow or hit V in order to stop it from drawing shapes, using the eraser, um, using the knife tool or anything else that is there, like draw freehand, any of those. So we're gonna go back to the preference and I'm gonna change it back and I'm gonna share with you guys some other preferences that you know I recommend that you set them to. So let's go back to tools. 
I'm gonna leave this at draw select. Oh, the benefit of leaving it on continue, um, I was doing a video last night and I was showing how to create a um, connect the dots. And within that image, I had to use my eraser tool in different sections, but repeatedly. So for that, I wanted to have my eraser on continue to use eraser, um, continue using eraser. Or when I was cutting it, I wanted it on continue to use a knife because I was making several cuts and I didn't want to have to go back and click on the eraser tool or the knife tool. In that instance, that is a time where you it, it's better and it's more time efficient to leave it on continue to draw. The next thing I want to go over is um, selection tools. So when drag selecting, select shapes touching the drag box. The other option is select shapes enclosed in a drag box. So when you have it touching a drag box, we're going to go ahead and cancel. All you have to do when you're dragging, so you will use your left mouse key, you know, start away from it, bring it over. You see the marching ants at the bottom. As long as you touch it, it will select it. That is what that preference does. If we come back to tools and we make it to where it has to be enclosed in a drag box, I mean, yeah, enclosed, but by the drag box, you have to select the entire Thing in order for it to select. So we'll start off here. You see my marching ants. If I just touch it, nothing happens. If I come like right here and you see where those marching ants are, nothing happens. I'm going to take it up to where I'm around this circle, but touching the other one. So see, I have my box around that first circle, but nothing on the second one. So I'm going to come up. It, it's on that little rectangle, but nothing else. It's on that bigger rectangle, nothing else. When you have it on that one, it has to be completely enclosed. That can have benefits. The benefits of it is very, very minimum. Uh, I prefer to have it where it's just touching. Most times you just need to be able to touch something um, in order to select it, unless you have something that, um, it's a lot of things you really wanna isolate it. But if you have Designer Edition or above, you have the Lasso tool, and that really helps with that. And we'll get into Lasso tool in a, in a different quick tip video. So I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna change that back to touching, not enclosed. The other thing is the single bounding box or multiple bounding boxes. So with the single, I'm gonna try and move this off to the side. You see where, how this is set up to where there's just one box that has the white um, squares around it and you see one rotation, oh, it will let me move it, good. Uh, one rotation green circle. That is what happens when you have it as a single bounding box. All of those things, like if you use the rotation, it will rotate them all together um, based off one. Anything on the inside of you, do, you do see what's individually selected because they all have an individual gray box around it. But there's only one bounding box. If you choose multiple bounding boxes, and then hit okay, you're going to see that each one is gonna have its own box uh, with the uh, white squares and each one is gonna have its own um, green circle. So that can be a lot. If you have something and let's say you uh, got an SVG, you need it to release compound path, everything that's in there, anything in between, any part that's inside of a letter, any of those will then have uh, these individual boxes, individual green um, circles for a rotation, and that can be a lot on your screen. So I don't necessarily ever use this because it's just a lot to look at and a lot going on. My recommendation is to leave it as one bounding box. I mean, whichever one you pick, it's going to move based off of that one as well. So when you're rotating, when you have the one, it will move them all the same. But whatever uh, rotation that you select, it's gonna move it based off of that. So you saw up here, it moved it based off of where that particular rectangle was. If I come to the one here, it's gonna move it centering on that circle's axis. If I do it off of this one, it's gonna do it based off of that one. 
So it moves based off of which circle or which rotation circle you click on. Again, this isn't my favorite preference. I prefer to have them as a single bounding box. Um, then most of these, they are kind of default and I never really have to touch them as far as new shape becomes select. You know, when you right click a, subs a subsequent shape, the new ones come. Um, when a, a selection lasso style, it just needs to touch it. So you don't have to be exact as far as getting around it. Same thing with the drag. So you don't have to be exact when you are going around it. Now this one can be a little touchy and you kind of want to have it to say enclosed if you're really using it because then it's no different than dragging. So for that one, I do recommend that you put it on enclosed uh, so that, um, so that it, you know, you can really isolate it. But when you're doing it that way, you have to make sure that your mouse isn't moving around to where it goes a little too close to it. And, you know, you're missing just one small part of it. Because if you're missing any part, you know, and you kind of went into any part that you want to select with the lasso, it's not going to select it because then it won't be completely enclosed. And you will have to um, start all over again. This one works but again if it's touching it it can select something else but that's not a bad thing because you can always hold down shift and click on the part that you didn't want and it will deselect that so um and for most of these i don't ever really touch you know just um well for um for the controls for your edit points uh selected points only so as far as showing the handles you don't want to see all of them um, and then I never really see the difference in these as far as thick lines to polygons and things like that. I never really see the difference in, in these. Um, and then when paste, oh, this is a very important one. When pasting an object, the new object becomes selected. If you don't have this, you can paste, but it's going to stay on the original. That can have its pros and cons because if you were just making a duplicate of something, you just want it off to the side, then you do have to come back to the set that you actually want to work on. So that can have its pros and cons, but most of the time I like to have that one selected because if I just copy it, it's selected and it's I can move it away. If you don't do it that way, it, and they um, depending on if you're doing paste in front or if you just do duplicate, sometimes it's a little too close to it, and then it's harder to select it to move it away. And I'll show you um, what I mean by that. So let's go um, with, we're going to move this off to the side. Let's click off, and I'm going to copy and paste. You see this one selected, and you see where it's right on top, and that's only one shape, so I can easily click on it and move it. If I go and I say no shapes selected, we're going to go ahead and hit OK on that. See, nothing is selected. So if it was a lot of items that I copied and pasted, I would have to go back in there, reselect them to move them off of the page or move them somewhere mm -hmm. else. So my recommendation is to leave it where it selects the new shape. And those are all of your basic preferences as far as tools. Maybe I will change the title on this for tools. I will do another quick tip to kind of go over some of the other preferences within Silhouette Studio and what my recommendations are. All right, guys, hopefully you found this quick tip helpful. If you have any additional questions or suggestions for quick tips, do not hesitate to go ahead and post them as a comment below. If you are on Facebook, feel free to check me out. I invite you guys to check me out. I have a Facebook page, Silaholics Anonymous, which I do live videos from almost daily. Um, and you can also uh, join my Facebook group, Silaholics Anonymous Silhouette Help. That link will be in the description box. Also check out my second channel, Elite Prints and Creations, and that is where I will do demos and live demos of different projects um, that you can see, whether it's with Silhouette Studio, Cricut, Cricut, uh, Sublimation, uh, Party Crafting, things like that. All right, guys, until next time, have a great one.